All right, North Lake students, we are approaching our first uh, lab test window here coming up soon. And um, I'm releasing this announcement to kind of give you in this video to give you a little bit more of a uh, an idea of what the test is going to look like and and uh, what kinds of questions you might see and how that's all going to work. So let's just kind of talk through that. Um, first thing about the lab test is you will find it when the window opens up in the lab materials folder on your left uh, of eCampus. And so you'll see all the stuff that we've been doing, but with, right at the top, there will be a, a, a little link there that you can click for the lab test. And um, once you click that, it'll open up. Um, you will have a timer on there of three hours, which is way more than you need, uh, most likely for that. Um, at worst, it'll probably take about two. Um, and then um, you only get one uh, attempt at submitting the test. So you need to make sure your internet is stable and that you are willing and able to put in the whole time to get it done, start to finish. Um, and then once once you do that, you hit submit and it's done. So um, that's where that's going to be. Some good things to know about the test, which I'm sure you've read already in my announcement, is that um, you may use basically everything that we've used within the lab uh, experiences that you've done so far. So I'm looking at things like the notes, I'm looking at the ID charts, which I'll be using in just a second, so the black and white um, mineral ID chart and the colorful one. Um, I, I basically any of these materials, the slideshows, things like that, that you can use. So feel free to reference those. It is completely um, open. Um, uh, the, the way the test is going to look basically is something like this you're going to get a picture of a mineral and it's going to ask you two questions about each picture. And so I'm kind of sharing with you, I'll, I'll make this as big as I can in just a second, but um, you basically get a, a mineral uh, that's got a nice close up detailed uh, clear picture of that mineral sample. And then you'll from there uh, be looking at multiple choice style questions about that mineral. Okay. So I have some practice ones below, but before you uh, get started with your test, make sure you do have um, those uh, mineral ID charts at a minimum printed out or, or up and ready to go. So if you look at my desktop right now, I've got this one ready to go. And I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit on that because we're gonna need that to answer the questions coming up. Okay, so um, a couple of general pointers. The questions that say what is the name of this mineral those uh, those answers will all appear on this chart okay so if I say what is the name of this mineral the the word the name will be on here somewhere whereas if you click over to this chart there are a lot more minerals on here and it's uh, more than you need to worry about so um, I'm not going to ask you to identify something like um, for example limonite I know that's not on the black and white version of the mineral ID chart. I won't ask you what is the name of this mineral if it's limonite. What I will do though is I will tell you in the question this mineral limonite is showing something 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 and I'll ask you the question about it. Okay so that's how that's going to work. Now I'm going to keep this one handy uh, for the purposes of our um, a little tutorial here. You're not gonna. I'm not gonna reference this chart hardly at all. Um, we can, if you want, um, use this on the, the actual mineral test. So that, that this, if you like this one better and it works better for you, you just do whatever works best, and that's fine. This one will, it will be sufficient for the most part to answer a lot of our questions. So, let's take a look at our situation here. So, what you'll get, like I said, is this picture, and it'll say consider the following mineral. Now, somewhere around. The, the picture, there's gonna be one other thing typically where it kind of gives you a little fact about the mineral. So it might say something simple like that, harder than glass. So that being said, we know that this mineral looks like this, it's kind of a pinkish color and it's harder than glass. Now we get, I got four questions here. You're only gonna see two questions per, per mineral, but I wanted to give you an idea of what other types of questions you might see. Um, so it says, based on the evidence from this photo, the mineral shows which of the following and you have um, the option of a cleavage pattern, fracture, softer than copper, and metallic luster. And so let's think about the um, 
let's look at C and D, the, the softer than copper and metallic luster. Well, it says it's harder than glass. So if you remember from our experiences so far, what's more uh, tough? Is it glass or is it copper? Well, copper has a hardness of three, so it doesn't take actually that much to scratch copper, like a penny. Um, glass can be five and a half to six, something like that. So clearly, um, if it's harder than glass, it's going to be harder than copper. So we don't want to use choice C. Metallic luster, well, what does this look like? Does this look like a piece of aluminum foil? Does it look like a gold bracelet? Does it look like um, a musical instrument like a trumpet, something like that? Do you see a metallic shine? And I'm hoping that you're looking at this saying, absolutely not, this is pink. There are no such thing as a pink metal as far as I know. And it certainly has more of a, if anything, it has more of a, looks like glass. Um, it looks like light can get through it. And you know that light cannot get through metal. So this almost looks like it's sort of glowing a little bit, which means it's translucent. So I would eliminate both C and D based on that. Um, now you're down to a cleavage pattern. And if you have the option here, if, you, if it looks like you've got cleavage versus fracture, one of those is probably the answer. So you've got to decide, does this look like it has a pattern of cleavage? In other words, is the side that we're looking at or are there multiple sides that look very flat? Or, or do they look parallel to each other? Do you see a certain one side, especially that one on the right looks kind of flat, but is the other side on the left also flat? And if you look at it, it's very irregular and wiggly, and I, it doesn't look like it's parallel to that. This surface that we're looking at across the top, definitely not. Um, this is very irregular, wavy. You can even see some, some curved uh, kind of break lines where it got snapped, uh, and it looks like it was a very ugly snap, which usually means not a cleavage pattern. Just to be sure, uh, the other way to tell about cleavage is to look at the way the light's reflecting off of it. If it looks like this whole surface is reflecting the light consistently, where it's all kind of one big more of a glare than what you see here, this is actually like irregular shiny spots. Um, if it's all glaring at, at uh, one time, like kind of like your um, iPhone in the car when the sun hits it and you're trying to drive and it, the whole screen kind of just reflects the sun, that's a big flash of light. This is more scattered about and not able to do that. Um, I have another picture down here. On this one, if you look at it, th there, there are many flat and parallel sides, and this would be the opposite of uh, what we're looking at above, where if this were, if I were to shine light at this, I could actually use it almost like a little mirror to shine the light back at my eye, and the whole side of that mineral would actually uh, show a flash of light at, all at the same time, and we'd see almost that glare. So, um, what I'm hoping you're realizing here is that this is definitely not cleavage. This is a, a, a very ugly fracture pattern, um, and this mineral does not break cleanly. It is very um, irregular and kind of, um, it's messy when you break this mineral, and you don't get a pattern in the pieces. So if I smash it, I don't get little pieces that look like, uh, kind of like on this one. If I smash this one, I'm going to get little uh, kind of tilted rhombus-shaped um, pieces, then they all look very similar. Whereas this one, they're going to be different patterns, uh, very ugly, very um, <clears throat> disorganized looking. Okay, so we have come up with the fact that this has a pattern of fracture, not cleavage. Okay, number two says, what gives this mineral its high hardness value? And that is, um, I'm going to tell you, if I ask a question like that, the answer is probably going to be the same. I don't care what the question is. It could say, why is this mineral pink? Why does this mineral have fracture? Why is this mineral have uh, such a high hardness? Or why does it uh, show a clear to white street color? The answer is always the same. And that goes back to the internal arrangement of atoms, just right out of the notes. So um, the, the way the atoms are arranged are responsible for everything about that mineral. If it had a smell, that's still because of the internal arrangement of the atoms. That means that it, it, some of the atoms aren't able to escape and you can smell them. Um, this one doesn't, but that's the way it is. Uh, so all of these, I don't see large crystal growth uh, or different crystal shapes on this particular one. Impurities, 
that is something that comes from the environment around the mineral. So if the, the reason that one might be pink, it might have a little to do with what environment it was in and what, um, what kinds of atoms are actually in it and how they're arranged. Um, weathering of the mineral surface, again, that's an environmental thing. So uh, really any property of any mineral <clears throat> is based on its internal arrangement of atoms. And so the identity of this mineral, we're gonna use um, some of the information we already just established to go figure it out. So I'm gonna say, okay, first, I asked you what the identity or the name of that mineral is. And I can tell you right now, based on what I said earlier and guarantees that I have going into this test, that name is somewhere on this chart, okay? So that's step one. The other thing is it has a high hardness. And so that's a, a big thing because we're saying harder than glass, which, you know, somewhere from here, maybe here on up. So it's gotta be one of those. The other thing to look at is the, the actual, um, gotta go back over to the other one, the actual um, fracture pattern that we just talked about. we spent a lot of time on fracture. Well, that really narrows down our choices right away too. So if you look on this chart, you have cleavage and fracture as a check mark. So one or the other, and we just said it's fracture, which means it's got to be uh, a check mark on the right hand side of that vertical line there. And so if you look at that, there aren't that many that that do that. Number one, <clears throat> and we already said that the hardness was somewhere higher than glass. So that's down down at, at least greater than five, right? So even these ones up here are eliminated based on that. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna say, okay, it was one of these, but we also said it's fracture. So that means it's now down to just three options. So here they are, okay? So really now what you have to do is kind of look at what other characteristics it says in, in the, the writing here and kind of what we, we already have seen by looking at it. So um, let's see, light green and granular. I don't think that that's what we were looking at. Ours was kind of a purplish pink color. Uh, glassy luster, that is something we did see, may form hexagonal crystals. I don't see hexagonal crystals in that particular sample, but you know, maybe it can, I don't know. The other thing I see here is colorless or variable. Colorless means it's clear or white, and uh, variable means it could be similar to that, but also have like an actual kind of tone to it. So in other words, um, fluorite, for example, can be, uh, it's all kind of translucent and you can see through it pretty easily, but it could have, it could have a greenish tint to it, could be bluish, could be purplish. So I think the fact that we're looking at a glassy luster with a purplish tint could, could mean it's this. So now we look down at the other third option, it says dark red to green. Well, I don't think that's what we're seeing there. And um, other than that, I mean, it does have this one here, garnet does have glassy luster, but it's seen red. And <clears throat> you know, if you know garnet, the birthstone, that's a very brilliant red, if anything. So I have a feeling that we're not looking at that one either. So that means that we have determined that we are dealing with quartz. So you would go back to your, in your lab test, there's a little box that you check for quartz and then you would move on. And that's, so that's the identity of that mineral. Um, uses. This is the easy question. Now, um, you have a slideshow that has some uses on it. Um, the other thing about this chart here, a lot of times it does give uses um, that uh, it may or may not be the answer to the question, but most of the time they are. Um, so if you look here, it says for uses on quartz, it's hard to select that those words, but glass, jewelry, and electronics. So let's see if any of those are an option for that question. I see making glass, there it is. So that's actually the answer, okay? So I hope that kind of clears up some of the questions. A lot of them are repeated questions. So you'll get a lot of questions about the uses of the minerals. You'll get a few questions about why a mineral has what it has, which is always the internal arrangement of the atoms. Uh, you'll get a lot of questions that just say, hey, what's the identity of this mineral? Um, and then based on the picture and information, you'll get tons of questions. This is the most popular kind of question. So what's the most obvious feature of this mineral? What do you see that's really strikingly obvious about the mineral? So it could be cleavage, it could be a street color, it could be um, 
uh, what luster it might have, or, or uh, might be a question related to the hardness, which you're going to have always some sort of hint also to kind of guide you in those questions as well. Um, really quickly, I don't know if I, I don't think I said the name of this other one here yet. I just had this up as a comparison, but um, if I were to tell you that this mineral has the hardness of a penny, that's my random hint, okay? We could go back and maybe use this exact question right here. What is the identity of this mineral? If it looks like this and it has a hardness of a penny, what are we talking about? Okay, so once more, I'm going to, not only am I going to just use that, that little hint, but I'm going to use the fact that I'm talking about, I'm looking at a mineral with a very obvious cleavage pattern. So if you look, I, I see a flat side or crack here, and it has another one right there, and those are parallel. I also see it going horizontally. I see it go across there, so it's parallel, 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 parallel. This one here, parallel to this one again. So there's a lot of this going on. That tells me if I hit this, they're gonna, it's gonna break like that. And it's gonna make pieces that look like little squished squares or cubes, okay? So this is a pattern of cleavage, hardness of a penny, and color-wise it looks clear to white, maybe a little gray. Um, so let's go over to this chart really quick. And again, hardness of penny, hmm. Well, that's a three, and you'll have that a bit information available. So, I mean, you could go right here and probably just get the answer. The other thing is, is that mineral metallic? Does it look like, again, jewelry, gold, silver? Uh, does it look like aluminum foil or a musical instrument? Definitely not. So um, you can eliminate all four of those. And the uh, middle of the road hematite here, if it says either, just so you know, that just means it could look like um, metallic, but it might have a rusty color or rusty de uh, debris on it, um, which is an oxide form when something rusts because it has a lot of iron in it. So that could happen. That is not what we're looking at there. Um, so we're non-metallic, hardness of a penny, which means you're in this, let me see if I can select that a little bit better. That's in this neck of the woods. Um, all of those show cleavage and not fracture. So we would just kind of have to look at the hardness value or some other um, facts about that mineral. And well, when you use the hardness value, the first option is calcite. And you can see the little picture there shows that kind of squished or slanted cubic shape there. That's a rhombus or a parallelogram. Um, it might say in the hint, it could have said bubbles with acid. That's an optional hint I could give you. Um, but colorless or variable, that also matches up. So I'm going to go with, yes, that is calcite. So that is it for the kind of the tutorial. Those are just some questions you'll get. So there'll be um, 25 different samples, uh, pictures rather, like this, and then will be two questions about each. So that's 50 questions. Um, there will also be some bonus questions on there. So you have the opportunity to uh, basically answer those bonus questions without penalty. Uh, it'll be the same kinds of questions. It'll just be a picture and it'll say maybe some, something like, what's the identity of this mineral? And it'll be based off of your uh, um, knowledge and of geology and your charts. So um, you can get, I think there's five or six bonus questions. So I'll, there, there are a couple of points a piece. So you can try those without actually any kind of penalty and, and really uh, boost your score a little bit. So there's that. Um, and that's it. So. Uh, the test will be on Blackboard. It'll be, um, it's open notes or whatever. So um, I'm not making you go through this lockdown browser nonsense. Uh, we're just going to use the materials that you've been given and the processes that you have, have learned and, and hopefully do the very best you can. So that's it for the mineral lab test. So good luck on that and um, check out the dates and times of the uh, window that's open. It's going to be two days basically. Um, and you can do it anytime, day or night. So just check that out and, and look at which days those are.